Welcome to the Rabbit Hole, Politics and Prose, a production of LibertyNation.com, hosted by Mark Angelides. As we cast our eyes over world politics, and more specifically the Washington, D.C. swamp, the public could be forgiven for thinking that elected politicos have the power of kings. Not only do we see ruling by decree becoming the order of the day, but also power and privilege have become birthrights for the unworthy offspring of our supposedly virtuous leaders. It is not titles and lands that are handed on one generation to the next, but power, position, and of course, cold, hard cash. No one would begrudge an inheritance worked for over a lifetime and lovingly nurtured to be the gift of a parent to a child. But what we see in the halls of government is not this. It is unearned wealth, unworked for gains given as a reward, simply for the virtue of being the offspring of one elected to serve. Matthew twenty-five twenty-nine reads, For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Perhaps more commonly phrased as, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. This adage, it's, it's more than just a saying, it's a, a way of life, both in practical terms and as a mathematical model. Let's consider a few of the, the children of elite leaders around the world and ask ourselves a simple question. Would these individuals be in the position they are if they didn't have a parent paid for by the public purse? The most recent grand example would be Hunter Biden, a man so uniquely unqualified with so many personal liabilities that it'd be hard pushed to get a job almost anywhere. That's not to say he's not a smart guy, nor even a decent one, once the levels of addiction are stripped away. But his criminal record, without ever having spent a day in jail, his at least four years of sustained drug use and well-known dalliances would disqualify him from any public-facing job. But Hunter's father is Joe Biden, and as such, he derives the privilege that comes with his lineage. Millions of dollars, international travel, and foreign investors playing leapfrog to hand over their money to, a, to an admitted drug addict with questionable self-control. Would a hunter by any other name smell quite so sweet? And what of publishing deals? How many aspiring authors, whether children's books or biographies, just happen to have parents in government. Casting our net further afield, British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher's son, Mark Thatcher, was arrested for trying to overthrow Equatorial Guinea using mercenaries for the purpose of exploiting oil rights. Quite a crime, you might say. Um, he was released on the same day he was arrested, later found guilty and ended up paying a £300,000 fine, less than half a million dollars. And he had his sentence suspended for five years. Sure, it's a lot of money, but perhaps not so much for someone who has ambitions of taking over a country. The Iron Lady herself was not a wealthy woman. She, she was the daughter of a shopkeeper who studied chemistry and became a lawyer. How did her offspring gain such heady ambition? See, these princelings uh, of the political sphere, they're not a new thing. It's a position as old as history, and, and some would argue that's where it should have been left. The days of feudal lords are gone, yet the practices remain. The word nepotism, uh, for that's what it comes down to. It originates in the Latin term nepos, meaning nephew. Uh, it describes the act of giving benefits to those in the family. Now, there's a major difference between an inheritance and passing on benefits directly to the act of bestowing high office, contracts and positions that is not yours to give, but within the purview of the office you hold. When a father gives his son or nephew a gift of a job in a company he owns, that's his right. When he gives him uh, gifts of cash or property, that again, it's his right. But that's not what we see throughout history with these little princes, as they call them in China, of the political class. The word nepotism, it came to prominence within the Holy Roman Church, where popes and cardinals, senior members of the church, would have illegitimate children. 
Now, these would be commonly known and called by all as nephews and nieces and could therefore be welcomed into high society. The reality is that despite the piousness inherited in the church, the, these nephews, they were an open secret and they played a large role when considering who was rewarded with rank. When a new pope was elected by the College of Cardinals, uh, serious horse trading took place. It was the order of the day. What positions would each cardinal receive? Certainly that was an issue. But more importantly, what was, what could be gifted to the offspring? Control of lands, control of the public purse, taxation rights, con military control, positions within the church. All these were gifts to be given by the the virtue of the giver's own position. We're in the middle of a, an attempted realignment. Gone are the calls for equality of opportunity. Now it's the clarion call of equality of outcome. Let's put aside for a moment that to achieve an equality of outcome would require a more ambitious restructuring of society than has ever been dreamt. It would necessitate the end of private ownership and the amassing of wealth. So what does that leave besides political power? In Soviet Russia, there was a divide between those who held power and those who did not. One group had wealth, food, grand accommodation and security. The other, of course, didn't. It was deemed necessary that those in power should not live too grandly or they would risk the anger of the people. So the, the nepotism, it operated far more secretly. Rank was a, a common reward for the bloodlines. Secure positions in the myriad bureaus, access to facilities not allowed to the proletariat. Is this the future that we can now expect to come out of Washington, D.C.? How many family members of senators, of representatives, have companies whose sole purpose it is, is to get those people re-elected. They're funneled hundreds of thousands of dollars to send to send mailers, to make phone calls, becoming enriched in the process for doing something that a, a local stationery store would do just as well. This is how the great leveling will be presented to the people. You can't pass on your own personal wealth to your children. But we politicians, we can pass on your tax dollars to our own. Welcome to the new Soviet America. Only family members need apply. Thank you for listening to The Rabbit Hole. Go deeper on the topic discussed in this video. Head on over to one of these links here or go to our Liberty Nation Roku channel. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for Liberty. The Rabbit Hole, politics and prose, a LibertyNation.com production. Available at Libsyn, Apple iTunes, Stitcher, on Roku, and other fine podcast providers.